She's the funniest person on TV in terms of acting and also in terms of, of writing, in terms of being in a scene and knowing, oh, what can I add here? Uh, what's a little line? What's a way that I can phrase things that is funny but sounds like the way a human being would say it? I'm a fraud. No. You should do them. Oh, I should do them. <laughs> you think that's what people want? Me running around like a big dumb goof? I do that crap for my nephew, and he's five forever, if you know what I mean. I get through a lot of scenes with her, and it is, it is comedic paradise. Because you have someone that will play off of you in any direction you want to go, and then will give you better lines than what you already have. It's, it's, the, it's, it's a miracle. It's so great to get to work with her. I mean, she was the she was the hidden voice of SNL for so many years, like the the, the throughout the '90s and stuff. The, the 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 darker directions that show went in had a lot to do with her. There was kind of an embarrassing moment when she and I were hanging out. We're just talking about comedy. I'm like, my favorite one of my favorite series of sketches, and I don't know why it didn't become a movie because it'd be an amazing dark little indie film were the Buddy Mills sketches about that late-night Vegas entertainer. Chris Kattan played him, and there were those constant Canadian crosses by the other actresses as the waitresses, none of whom had a line, but each of whom you absolutely knew what their character was by how they were dressed and how they would look at the audience. I'm like, there's, it was like this little microcosm you know, it, it was it was basically like it was like a Floyd Mutrux film, uh, but but like three and a half minutes long. And then Paul's like, "Well, I wrote all those; those were mine." I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like I, because I didn't know that she. You know, they don't get to sign the sketches, but those are all hers. And if you watch them again, it is absolutely her voice and kind of her worldview, and and also the stuff that fascinates and delights her. Well, one of the ways that AP Bio is is different than a lot of the stuff that I've been lucky enough to shoot everything from like King of Queens to like Veep, if you want to look at a, at a spectrum of what comedy can be, is that <clears throat> AP Bio uses a very, very, very almost familiar to the point of uh, redundancy setting of it's a high school with, with kids, but the teachers are kind of wacky. And then there's a guy, you know, but then they, Michael Bryan and his writers kind of use that to smuggle in stuff about aging and what does it mean to when you used to be the rebel and now you're not anymore and the kids that are coming up it isn't even that they're rebel rebelling they're not rebelling in ways that you want them to rebel like oh it, it's a it's a weird thing that i'm seeing now with a lot of boomers and gen xers is they're not angry at these dang kids for being such outlaws and reprobates they're angry at them for actually being responsible and wanting to uh make the future better they're like why aren't they out there you know, screwing things up the way we were because there's this, I think there's like vestigial guilt from the years that they wasted. And when you see people like the Parkland survivors actually making the most of their youth and actually doing stuff to change the world. and But there's comedy to be gotten out of that. There's comedy to be gotten out of that misguided sense of I'm going to help these kids by showing them how to rebel. Sometimes that's the last thing that they need. Um, and 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 Michael, Michael Bryan is, is really not afraid to have weird little um, cul-de-sac-y things that don't necessarily pay off story-wise, but are there just to kind of do a little touch on the character and make you go, wait, what, what did that mean? And then they just move on, which when you think about it, that's what you sort of experience in everyday life. There's either people, you, people that you've never met, you'll see them doing something weird, or someone you've known for 40 years that'll suddenly say or do some weird thing in women. I didn't know you'd knew about that oh yeah that's a whole other thing don't worry about it and then it never comes up again so that the the show really captures that rhythm i mean i think that it's a really cool, cool case study that durbin is doing of this is a guy durbin is a guy this isn't the case of a guy who's going to his god is going to fail his god failed before he started worshiping him so it's going to be interesting to see what will actually knock durbin out of jack worship you know, and which, by the way, could not be more timely right now. So um, I can't. There's a couple things coming up I can't say, um, but Mike and the writers are having a lot of fun playing with what that dynamic means on deeper and deeper and funnier, funnier levels. I, at first, I couldn't believe you were leaving. You know, and then I 
took a sharp turn to anger. Oh, did you uh, punch a hole in the wall? Oh, that, no. I thought it'd be cool to have an office hammock, then I found out the hard way that drywall does not support a human body. Hmm. I would always try to seek out, um, like, more interesting, like, it, like, if I was given a syllabus of something to read, I would then go and, well, what else did these people write, or what else did they influence? And I would try to, like, go down those roads, and I didn't see, I was never, like, studying for the test. Tell me what I got to regurgitate back, and I'll just say it, you know. So I, I, was, I was actually interested in trying to learn how the world worked. Um, but a lot of times that would metastasize in a very bad way in trying to be the smartest or the coolest. And sometimes it, it would mean I would either be very, very arrogant and obnoxious, sometimes with my own friends, trying to one-up them, or even worse, sometimes I would try to buddy up to the alphas or the bullies because I thought that that would rub off on me a little bit and I would be more, you know, that's the thing that I've always been really ashamed of is I, there were times I should have stood up to the bullies or at least gone, hey, stop making fun of that person. And I didn't because I wanted to be cool. It took me a long time to realize that cool is a trap and cool is the opposite of actually living a real life, you know, but that took a long time. And I wish it I wish it hadn't taken me that long to realize that. I didn't even realize that through college now that I think about it. So it took me way too long. Well, you know, she turns 10 in, God, three months. Um, you know, I, I realized a few years ago I showed her and all of her friends Star Wars, and their reaction was like, eh, I, okay. The, the generation that's coming up now is not as wired into – television and movies as we are because they don't it doesn't mean anything to go oh be in front of the screen at this time or be at the theater this day because it all gets pulled out of the air for them onto ipads or whatever devices so i'm more once i saw that that was her reaction to star wars i i i had to make a conscious decision to go like i'm not going to be a great santini nerd dad where i'm going to shove all the stuff i like down her throat i want to let her because my mom and dad not into science fiction, not into horror, comic books, none of that stuff. And I found that on my own, you know. So she's going to find whatever she's going to find on her own. I'm going to let her. And there's been a couple of times, like, we were reading. Um, we would get together and we would read the um, uh, series of Unfortunate Events books. And when we got to book five, and I'm sorry, Daniel Handler, I love you. Uh, but she was like, it's the same. Th it, it's just they go and it's count. Orloff and he's disguised and the other adults don't see it and the kids do like part of me was going I wish you would see this at the end but part of me was like she's reading critically like that that's actually a good thing and and she had the same stuff to say about like Star Wars uh, you know well she's a princess she should just tell people it was just like she had her own take on things that said she is obsessed with Harry Potter and loves the Harry Potter books I think because they are more realistically dark and, and show what, you know, the, how nothing is ever 100% good or bad. And you keep getting those the rug pulled out from under you. So, you know, but again, I'm not shoving her towards things. She will find it or not. Hey, please, you're going to interrupt classes, all right? Ladies and coach. Good. The school needs to know that you hate art. Yeah, you hate it. I don't hate art, all right? The, the, the parents thought that the back drawing was gateway nudity. And when you think about it, the back is around the corner from the boobs, and then you make a right turn, and you're at the butt.